We're doing a project on the five ton. The goal is to get a hitch made for this that is about 20, 22 inches off the ground. This is about 33 inches off the ground. To have it 22 to pull wagons, to pull the gravity wagons. The material I got is 3 8 of an inch thick. Here's more, five by five inch square tube in. Again, 3 8 another 3 8 plate. I got the material from a shorts or a scrap pile. I'll pop up some pictures of what I'm kind of, where I'm getting inspiration for this. There's a few ways to go about it. But there's some guys that did it on deuce and a halfs, and I only seen one guy that did it on a five ton. That is something I want to do, but I want to drop even lower. All right, so we got the big clevis off. It's over there. And I just got the left service one off. This is the emergency line for when you're hooking up a trailer and you put your glands on the side here and hook up. And so there's a little bracket and I'll cap this off just like I put a plug on here. But the idea is we're gonna have a plate. I'll probably put four, hopefully I can get a three quarter inch drill bit through here, four bolts, and then it's gonna drop down in the bottom about right here. And so it's gonna look like a field goal post. And this is gonna be our horizontal piece, 3 8 inch, five by five inch square tube. And so it's gonna be straight down about 24, 25 inches, 24, 25 inches. And then that tubing across, hitch right in the middle. And I'll try and reinforce it elsewhere. And this is what we got for our side plate. This is half an inch. The only, <laughs> this is the only half inch I could find. This is a four foot by eight foot plate. This is the smallest sheet I could buy, but that means I have plenty of room for air. But I want to have it bolt on so then I can take it off because the, the fear with this is when I back up with something, it's going to hit my hitch before it hits like the pumpkin or whatever, but before the tires are able to ride with it up. So if I know I'm not going to use it for like months and months and months and I'm going to use the truck a lot moving dirt and stuff, I'll be able to, to take it off. All right, both tires are off. All the stuff in the way is off. That big clevis that was right here, that's out of the way. So I think we're officially ready.
here was the idea. So this is three, three eighths thick. This is half inch thick. I spent a lot of time drilling these holes, half inch, half inch. The reason why it looks absolutely terrible is because I was originally gonna do six and then I was like, oh wait, I'm only gonna do four. And then the drilling was harder than I thought. And so that was combination of changing plans over and over. That's why it looks bad. Other side has two, three quarters and three half inch holes, but half inch, half inch. And so that is a uh, lock nut on the inside. And then I'm thinking we're gonna weld all around both sides, we'll leave it sticking out. We're gonna do instead of the two inch receiver, or shank, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be two and a half. So it should be a bit stronger. And that's the thought. And then maybe have triangle pieces here. There's going to be no tongue weight with the gravity wagon. It's all going to be uh, forward and back. Maybe a little side to side, but it's mostly going to be jerky. And yeah, those are pretty strong. So hopefully this works. We'll cut off as much excess we need. I made it a bit longer just in case. And maybe take off some back here just for room if things move and stuff. So it's coming together pretty good. So we got it all welded up and it ended up, we we danced between the stick welder and the, the MIG or the flux core. So we're gonna do, I think, gussets here. This is more important, I'm worried about this right here, the side plate bending because the excess force getting pulled on it this way. That's why I went with half inch side plate and then at three eight cross member, five by five inch. This looks pretty thin and I don't see any real reinforcement. Now he doesn't drop as low as I do. It's pretty close and he did do some angle iron there. Later in the video, you're gonna see me do gussets like this all around, trying to strengthen as much as I can to a spine in the back. So if you guys have any tips or tricks or feedback that you would have done differently, let me know in the comments. I'm always open to feedback and learning. I'm getting ready to cut out a hole for the, this is a two and a half inch receiver. I was thinking about a three inch, but our, our five by five inch tubing wouldn't take it. So I tried to get the heaviest duty receiver I could find. I'm gonna try and weld up more supports for this and stuff. This is just a 10 inch receiver. So I'll plasma cut that out. Hopefully I made the front markings and the back markings right. Everything's been going pretty smooth. The drilling of the holes took a while. And uh, I was able to do these gussets here, trying to make it as overkill and beefy as possible. So with the half inch plate, the three eighths, five by five inch tubing, and all the gussets we made, it should hopefully hold up. Because I want to be able to take this off whenever I want to. And so I, d I don't want to attach anything to the frame of the truck or weld to the frame of the truck. So it's just five bolts on each side. Here's how it's looking so far. Again, this is flux core welding, so it leaves us a bit of a mess, a lot of splatter and stuff, but on my machine, I'm able to weld thicker material flux core. That's why I'm doing it. And I ended up thinking that this would be good. So a th uh, three eighths inch little plate here, almost to create a spine for this plate, if that makes sense. Cause I was worried about when it's up there, it bending this way and stuff. So I think it's coming together. Very interested. This is the final key. A little worried how the receiver is going to go in, but I got a lot better with the plasma cutter. A little bit of slag in there, but that was, dude, I have gotten so much better. I mean, it's not like perfect or anything, but you literally can't be. When I cut out, when I cut out these for the five by five, it was so harder and I was so like more, 
Okay, that was, that was a pretty bad one, but these are pretty straight. I got a little messy up top there, but there we go. That looks good. That actually went through completely. So, I'm gonna leave as much down here as I can to add support. So I'll go look at what a typical receiver, how far it sticks out with the hole. And then I'll leave like that much and do some gussets down there and try and make that bulletproof too. We got her full. Thanks to old Lincoln. So this would be a good representation, especially when we come down the hill, pull up the hill. I might try low at first. Uh, one thing I want to see, and we can see if movement is how it butts against this. Like you should see it swings a little. You can tell it's. Up. And we aren't even using. We're using this little, you know thin thing in there too. There should be some slop in there. Right. So, but. Hey, you're sitting pretty square straight down, so it looks good. Let's take it a shot. Yeah. So. second low it's in third low right now or it's in neutral right now and then i went to but yeah the one one is what i took off and it just revved right up when we're going two mile an hour like so we'll, we'll kind of see i think you got to come to a stop to switch it between high and low yeah yeah what are you gonna do now 
is our dump trailer, two 7K axles, and we probably got 12 to 15,000, I would say, in here. At least 15, because this is... And so we're just seeing back here how this hitch rides with all this weight. You can see it's solid. You see the trailer? Yeah. Suspension moving. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. So this is more down force or tongue weight, tongue weight. This is way more tongue weight wherever you're gonna experience with the wagons because the wagons have a front and a rear axle and the front axle is a steer axle. Um, and so, yeah, the, the biggest thing is the sheer weight of all the grain in it pushing forward and back. So but this is a great test. I think this is a good test and we're, we're going rough off road. This will be kind of like field conditions. So this is day three of using the hitch on the wagon and it's it's turned out really good so far the first day we took it easy started with 15,000 pounds of corn and then 20 and 25 and it can handle 30 we haven't pushed it past 30 the wagons can hold just under 40,000 pounds of uh of grain but the wagon weighs seven and a half eight thousand got the safety chains hooked up to the binder i ended up taking out the hitch pin and i read a few things online that a grade eight bolt is actually stronger than the hitch pin because there's now there's no slop in it because it's actually sucked down where the hitch pin had some play in it so hopefully we're safe there first day of trying that out and this kind of how it ended up again we got the spine all the gussets made all around there and the big gusset here i was worried about this bending because i thought this was uh, uh the fear of bending was right here gusset gusset and then to reinforce the hitch i thought this was the weak point reinforce the hitch i did a uh, like spine that followed the curve of the of the tubing same on the bottom And then I did gussets on the sides as well. So tried to make it as heavy duty as possible. Two and a half inch hitch right there. One and a half, one and a quarter pins. It's held together really good. And we took the safety measures of just working our way up in terms of weight and it holds, holds pretty good. In the first two days of doing the corn, that was our further farm. It was about 12, 13 miles one way. So it took about an hour forward, hour 20 minutes in the tractor, but I was able to cut it down to about an hour in this because I can come back at 40, 45 mile an hour with an empty wagon. So that was pretty nice. And today it's going to be a shorter drive to the farm. So it'll be uh, really interested. There's going to be some hills that we're going to climb. So we'll see how it does on those. And it's all mostly gravel roads.
some oil coming out of the hub here and this seal is bad and this happened before and I just tightened down the bolts and some of these bolts like to back out so I don't know if threads are bad or whatever I'll just suck them back down and we'll see if it's still leaking after that all right we'll get it cleaned up and then that way we can tell if it's still leaking but obviously we'll top that off at the end of the day but that's not a crazy amount on the military truck and uh, I'm gonna wash it up real quick so hopefully we can kind of pinpoint where they're leaking from all in there so we're gonna get that cleaned up yeah it's been leaking the whole underneath so try and get it cleaned up here I hauled probably 15 loads, held up pretty good, didn't have really any issues. I just switched out the hitch pin for a grade eight bolt. And I went over it every single day, checked it all the time. There was a little bit of play right here and I made sure all the bolts were tight and everything held good. Um, but that was one thing that did move. So I might figure something out in the future. It did what we needed to do. It saved us a lot of time on corn harvest, probably at least two or three days. I think the hitch turned out pretty good. And now the five ton can move things around. I'm not gonna pull like skidsy or anything. And so, I don't know, it's just nice and we can take it off for when we move dirt. So that was a fun project. And thank you guys for watching.